Hey gang, uh, Kev here, big board, etc. Grand tactical system played it today in earnest. Got five turns under my belt, did uh, beach landings with my buddy. We were playing the Juno landing scenario nemesis and really, really interesting game. Uh, fascinating level. I'm going to tell you all the good stuff and then we'll talk about some of the things that I thought were kind of quirky and a little bit annoying uh, that perhaps is just a function of this particular module. I, I don't know. So, uh, <clears throat> fantastic narrative. Felt like I was, con we were engaged in a, uh, uh, a deadly beach landing. Uh, so it felt right. You know, the, 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 mechanisms to go through the exercise of bringing on DD tanks and landing craft and shelling the beach and the the obstacles and emplacements and uh, machine gun nests and stuff like that uh, all felt pretty good. And I don't have a lot of experience with that exercise but you can read the historical narratives and get a sense for the fact that this this felt pretty good. And in fact, our, our casualty rates ended up being pretty accurate. <clears throat> I probably would have liked to have held out a little bit longer. I, I think we might be we might be ahead by a couple of hours, but uh, certainly not much more than that. Uh, so the game runs, uh, it's a company level game, two hour turns. Uh, it's generally speaking a monster game with lots of smaller scenarios. Realistically, it could have been split up into two or three modules, and I think the designer could have made a lot more money uh, doing that. But hey, you know that's his deal. He wants to sell big monster games and give game, basically give content away for free. That's awesome, right? So, um, the, so the narrative side of it was really cool, and the gameplay, the way the rules worked out, once you kind of get into this flow thing, get this flow going and get out, particularly when you get off the beach, that's kind of a grind. It was an hour and 40 minutes for the first beach turn, uh, the first landing phase. It took a long time for us to get through because we were both referencing rules and neither of us had done the landings before. So that took a lot of time. <clears throat> Once we got past that, I think we, we found that we were, well, we played 10 hours, including lunch, uh, so nine hours. <laughs> Uh, today, maybe actually eight hours today for f nine, seven, nine, eleven, thirty. So only for four turns, uh, two of which were pretty significant landing exercises. Uh, so that said, I think the game moves pretty well, and the rules are uh, are reasonably well laid out. So excellent, excellent game. I think even if you are a even if you are a not a monster gamer, you could get the value out of the one map scenarios and the or the two map scenarios, and there's a couple of two and a quarter map scenarios, those types of things. I think you could get the value out of the game uh, if you could potentially pick it up on sale. And I think that my wife is starting the vacuum cleaner, which is problematic. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I found curious. Uh, I, I found the writing style of the rules as I was reading them last week to be uh, kind of Mark Walker-esque, uh, to use a phrase. They were a little verbose, and you kind of had to dig through for the meaning. And I guess the pet peeve that's already been uh, announced, and uh, that I mentioned to my buddy Pete, uh, that's already been discussed apparently on the forums, is that this is uh, rule book uh, version 1.1, which comes with the game. This is the exclusive rules, which is this thick, right? And you look at it and you go, okay, that's really cool. Uh, exclusive rules, lots of stuff for landings, that's fine. You open up and the first uh, 12 pages are uh, series 1.1 rule changes. Why aren't they in here? Well, I think it's a cost-cutting exercise. I think maybe a lot of these were, were printed or something, or maybe they didn't get around to it, ran out of time, I, I, I don't know. but. What that means is basically, yet again from another publisher, when eventually when version two rules come out, I've got to go print it all out and put it all and you know put it together. And basically this goes back in the box and is never used. The first twelve pages of this are uh, put in a box and never used. And then you have the exclusive rules, which could be netted out to well, they're pretty substantial actually. Uh, 
yeah, it's 30, 40 pages. A lot of that is terrain. There are paratrop rules, there are naval invasion rules, and uh, the landings and piggyback, and piggyback mode and random events and landmines and all sorts of fun stuff. Right? There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that's very detailed. Lots of cool diagrams in here to explain stuff. Um, there are a lot of really obvious spelling errors in the rules and uh, words that are incorrect words that are in sentences in some of the examples that look like things were added at the last minute and were not proofed correctly. Not happy about that, not for this much money. It's not really not acceptable. Uh, also in the rules, it would have been nice, it's particularly with the new stuff, with the invasions, that if you know, we're looking at this invasion and trying to go through this exercise, that you, know, you tell me uh, for you know, uh, when we're doing DD tanks that when I'm firing at them, I'm firing, uh, what, what color am I firing on, right? And obviously I know it's armor, but it's on the armored side, right? But just the, the color scale here, this is the CRT table. And there are a few new things in here, like mortars and coastal batteries and stuff like that. Not a big deal. Uh, but it would have been nice. There could be more informative detail put into the rules and less verbosity would have given us a, a clearer, more concise rule set. So we spent a lot of time flicking backwards and forwards and ended up grabbing his set of rules and marking in on the rules what was actually supposed to happen, right? Uh, you can play much of the game with these two charts and this handy dandy updated sheet that someone made uh, that talks about the activations. It's a chip pull system, for those that don't know, it's a chip pull based system. And so when you're doing divisional activations or formation activations or what's called direct commands, you can often do two actions, but those actions can't be repeated, so you can't move, move, or fire, fire. You can fire and move, or move and fire, depending on the situation. Uh, and they cost command points to conduct a second action, and you've got to roll for all those things. So it's a little bit involved. There's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts going on in this game, and it's as I said, very interesting. And once you start to get whittled down all the bits you don't understand and don't know, you can start gleaning a little more about how to play the game and how to approach the game. Uh, so that's that's cool. So it, I think by the time I get around to getting my 12th Panzer, 12th SS uh, division on the board, I'll have a better feel for uh, how to defend and counterattack and attack uh, into the situation, in a given situation. Right now I'm a, I'm a little nervous about doing stuff because you kind of got to sit outside folks' range and then approach or, or, or lob fire in uh, at them or put bar barrages down on forces so they can't fire outside of their... They can't fire through the barrage, basically, is what happens. And then, uh, obviously, suppressing forces is uh, is desirable because that limits their ability to execute opportunity fire. A lot of die rolling. There's a lot of die rolling in the game. We kind of got to a point where we would both just roll two dice at a time so that, that you've got to make these uh, true quality rolls to see if you can opportunity fire. Uh, and then you've got the roll itself. And so we would just roll and then... If it was a zero, one, or a two, that meant for most of the units that I had, these coastal bunkers and things that they could uh, then have opportunity to fire, and then we'd have the die roll there. Most of the time, if it's a you know six, seven, eight, or nine, you're probably not going to hit anyway, so you just can move on and you kind of blow through stuff. So as as your opponents are moving, you just roll two dice and look at it, and roll two dice and look at it, and kind of go from there. There's some other things you roll dice for as well, uh, besides besides just the um, the uh, what am I trying to say for, for the, this opportunity fire. So uh, I have a better handle on what we're able to do and not able to do. More effect, more uh, more. I mean, a little bit more insightful, perhaps tomorrow. Uh, what else was interesting about the game that I thought was quirky? Yeah, the formations are kind of hard to track down. I I, uh, I can't imagine what this is going to be like when it's all punched and, and packed up. I think I'm going to have to keep it all in trays or baggies and label each formation and make sure each formation goes into its, uh, its allocated bag because there are hundreds of counters. Uh, I think 
six or seven, maybe six counter sheets. And that got me to wondering about, I was watching uh, Pete attack, and there are many, many units, but very, very few of them are involved in, in the combat at all. There's just a lot of guys just being moved up behind as he's moving forward, his, his lead units engage. You know, all the all the guys are behind, and it's really a couple of tank, uh, not battalions, a couple of tank uh, squadrons or companies that are doing all the all the heavy lifting. Anyway, lots lots still to learn. Uh, probably a lifetime to master. It's one of those types of games. I think it's probably in the pantheon of the OCS style system in that it is a game that people will play many, many, many times, just because of the sheer number of scenarios and the variety. Uh, of those scenarios, I don't know that uh, you know. I would certainly play this scenario again. P part of me wonders just how much variability there is in the landings. Uh, you actually do get to make a fair number of choices, but it really does boil down to just one or two things you get to choose. Uh, are you going to shoot at the landing craft or at the units in the landing craft? Uh, that's once the the craft is on the the ground, and so you make that choice. And then are uh, you going to opportunity fire or not opportunity fire if they uh, when they when they disembark? So you can fire at the landing craft, then fire at the infantry, or or fire twice at the landing craft. That type of thing. Uh, end of the day, I'm not sure. You know, we, we we inflicted a fair amount of damage on the on the landings, but not enough that I wouldn't just be happy enough to say, hey, look, historically they lost this much. Just let me set up on the beach. Or, or just off the beach and kind of play the game from there onwards. I'm not sure the, uh, the you know, hour and 45 minutes for that first landing phase was worth, worth it. If I could get it done in an hour maybe or 50 minutes, it might be, uh, it might be a little bit more palatable, but I don't know that I want to go through that, uh, that exercise um, too many times. I would certainly do it again because I think I might do a few things a little bit differently. And I certainly think that the the, uh, the Canadians would have done things very differently on their landing because there's a, there's a definite process you need to follow when you're landing because as you clear those obstacles out and clear out the, the uh, gun nests and the other bits and pieces that are actually a track that uh, you, you roll against and you can de deplete those, the effectiveness of those things, uh, once you start depleting those at a rapid rate, the, the whole defense of the Germans actually just crumbles and you really just left with some bunkers that you need to take out. So, so there is some, you need to do the landings in a very specific way and there's really not a lot of choice to that. You absolutely have to do it a certain way, otherwise you're kind of, kind of hosed. Right, long video, going to let you go. Play some more tomorrow. We'll let you know how it goes and talk to you soon. Take it easy.